when your season came to an end this year, in your mind, what was your thought process about where you might go, what teams in your mind were you thinking about? When did the Celtics come into your thought process? And when they finally came after you or you went after them, what was your reaction? Well, the first couple of days, uh, I had a couple of scenarios. I was thinking San Antonio. I was thinking Dallas. I was thinking Boston. I was thinking Cleveland. Uh, pretty much in Orlando. Those were my top teams that I was thinking about. But I didn't, I didn't make no, no real decisions on it for a while. I just sat back. That was the earliest I've been off in, whew, in years. So I just sat back, took advantage of the time, did things to my family, and, and just took it day by day. And when this all came up, then, you know, that's when the guys came out there, talked it over with my wife, talked it over with my kids, and we made our decision. Oh, Bill Doyle from the Worcester Telegram again. Rashid, who's more intense, you or a KG? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I would be have honest. To say, be honest now. I, I would have to say I am, Thank you. because he Thank can control you. his emotions. Thank you. <laughs> you know, of course, everyone knows my my history as far as technical fouls and this and that. But um, I mean, I don't think you can match the intensity that either one of us brings to the floor. That's called passion. <laughs> When you talk about uh, Sunday and you know, you know, basically came out, what made it that you didn't want to go to San Antonio, go to Orlando, anywhere else, and hear their sales pitches? And Boston was a place you definitely wanted to go. Um, just, just the overall view of the team, uh, looking at the bench, looking at these guys and the things that they accomplished here in the last few years, um, and not taking anything away from San Antonio, but I, I would have to say a few of the changes that they made on their bench and their roster uh, didn't quite sit with me too well. So I had to go to the best place where I felt as though was a good fit for myself. And could you reflect on your Detroit career? Oh, it was, it was nice. It was nice. It was a good, what, five, five and a half years or whatever. Um, I'm definitely glad that I had the opportunity to go there. I'm definitely, Joe gave me the opportunity to go there and Danny. Um, little do y'all know. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a little in, in the mix there, that whole thing before I went to uh, you know, Atlanta. But um, my, my career there in Detroit, I, I definitely loved it. Um, there are great people there. Um, my family and I, we've met lifelong friends there. Um, but it's just, just time for a new chapter in our lives. Um, no, no bad talk or disrespect to the Pistons organization. They've been wonderful to us. But it's, it's just time for another chapter in the life. She, uh, Alice Cook, WBZ TV. You've already won one championship. You know that feeling. Could you talk about that feeling and how important it is for you to get it back? Oh, it's definitely. It's a, yeah. it's a wonderful feeling being king of the hill. Um, no matter if teams or other guys like you or not, they got to respect you because you're the champ. So uh, you know, I was I was upset when these guys won it, but I was happy for them personally. But when they beat up on us. Uh, when I was in Detroit, um, you know, it's, it's part of it. But uh, like I said, it's a, it's a whole new day right now, and we're just excited. Kev, uh, can you talk just a little bit about what it's like? I'm sorry. Let me hear you. I want to come with my. <laughs> Put the mic up course. to you. Yeah. But, uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about what it's like for you to bring someone so similar in spirits and, and what it's like? It's going to be crazy with you two practicing against each other and just kind of the dynamic y'all are going to have or you have on <clears throat> Like I said, um, I'm overly excited um, to just how Doc is going to, you know, for his schemes and put this whole thing together. I think it's, I share uh, an excitement with everybody up here on the podium. Um, knowing that when I first got here, knowing that I saw how hard these two worked and having a guy like Rashid who's uh, not only dominant in the post, but um, I've always said it's like a mirror image of myself, um, sharing the passion, um, sharing his intensity. It's all pluses, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just overly excited. You have no idea. I'm sitting up here kind of composed or whatever, but they can tell you when I first got here, when I even first started talking to him about, you know, you know how he was going through his um, process and, 
you know, just how he was dealing with, uh, with, with, with this last year because I think uh, all four of us up here share that, you know, when you're in the league for as long as we all been in it, that you go through a dog time. And um, I, I was feeling him, so I just reached out real, you know, softly and kind of discreet and just seeing how he was doing. And then, you know, obviously the relationship has always been there, but, um, you know, voiced my opinion on how much I wanted to play with him. Um, you know, I don't really chase too many people. I don't really go out and seek guys and try to, you know, manipulate, but this is totally worth it. This was uh, my chance to play with another great big, another person who not only was as passionate, but as intense and was versatile and skill-wise. And like Paul, you know, and Ray said earlier, that someone that can fit right into our team, I think uh, is a perfect fit. You know, it's not an okay fit. It's not an I fit. It's a perfect fit. I'm feeling great, man. If Ed LeCert wasn't here or if he didn't have so many people who I'd take off running right now, but, you know, that's, that's the time and place for all that. I'm excited about this year. Proceed, Larry Ridley, uh, HDH, NBC here in Boston. What did the guys tell you about living in the city of Boston, the fans, and just the whole dynamic of being here in the city? Uh, they definitely said it's, it's a sports town, not just basketball, a sports town. You know, you have the Sox and, and the Bruins and, of course, the, the mighty Celtics. But, uh, you know, they, they said that it's, it's definitely – they got your back, bottom line. The fans got your back. Um, you know, when I was playing against these guys, yeah, I heard all the remarks and I'm this, I'm that, da 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 da. So now, hopefully, those those frowns are turned into some cheers that we're all on the same team. Yeah. Uh, Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. Danny and Doc, a lot of people are calling it an arms race in the East. Is Rashid someone that you targeted right from day one when the season ended, and why? I thought I was gonna get away without saying anything. It's going great. Are well, you gonna say something? <laughs> um, yeah, it's like Ray and Paul and Kevin said earlier. Um, you know, right when the season ended, you looked at the free agent list. There was one name that, that popped out right away, uh, and it was Rashid. Now, obviously, we didn't know if we could get him or not. We knew that's what we wanted. So, yeah, it was clear uh, for our team and who he was and how he plays. It was a perfect fit for us. Uh, Brian O'Neill, New England Cable News. You mentioned all the, the technical fouls. Is that something that is just part of your game with the passion, or is that something you, you kind of make a conscious effort to, to control? Uh, I would say a little of both. Um, the lovely ladies right there to your left has been on me about, you know, my technical fouls and, and different ways to, to shoot my emotions off, um, smiling or laughing or, or looking at them, just thinking of other, other things to do so I wouldn't get attacked. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but... <laughs> Uh, for the most part, um, I don't think I don't think my past teammates seen that as a problem. Um, yes, I, I go off sometimes. You know, I will admit that. But other than that, overall, I, I would say that I'm a pretty good teammate. Mike Petralia, WEEI.com. Paul, you've seen a lot here in your time in Boston. Having these three other guys up on stage with you kind of drive home the urgency of winning in the window as a lot of people talk about around here? I think it has <clears throat> for me. Uh, you know, it started last year, two years ago with Ray and Kevin, and I just think with getting Rashid, it gives you an extra boost of energy. You know, even last few weeks, I, I like it's hard for me to kind of like stay out of the gym. You know, I've been coming in, working out, picking up the ball here and there, but just making sure I'm ready for the upcoming season because I'm excited with the move that we made. I'm excited about the possibility of, of putting Rashid, being out there on the court with him. And, uh, you know, every day I just kind of like try to envision it. And, uh, you know, and if it goes the way I envision it, then uh, it's going to be a great summer next year. Kevin, when is the earliest you think you could have the shooting competition with, with Sheed? And, uh, how, how has these last couple months been for you? How, how, I guess, dark has it been? How happy now? And, and where exactly is your rehab at this point? <clears throat> um, 
I mean, as soon as you guys get out of here, we can shoot. You know, I think I'm sure you got time. <laughs> I'm rehab's going really well. Um, I'm ahead of schedule. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to continue to heal and uh, continue to get stronger. Um, to be honest with you, I've been in a pretty decent place mentally. I haven't been, like, in a dog's place. Um, I've been uh, really uh, educating myself with my injury, uh, going forward, trying to uh, be as preventative and do all the things I need to do to uh, not be in this position next year. Um, going forward, um, I'm about like Paul. Um, I haven't been, unlike everybody else, I haven't been really sleeping that much. <laughs> Uh, and that's that's how my excitement comes out. I haven't I haven't been really sleeping, and I've just been envisioning, you know, this whole year and trying to envision or trying to get some kind of grips on it. Um, but like I said, again, I'm excited.